92.3 Amp Radio. What up, familia? We got a dope-ass guest for you this morning. In the studio, six-time Grammy Award-winning producer, DJ, and all-around musical genius. Give it up for Skrillex! Yeah! Just before we kicked off this interview, you're literally chilling on your laptop minutes before we're about to go on, putting the final touches to your next single. Yeah. Your yeah. next new track. Yes. Which is with Luna it's George. With, with Luna George's Diplo. It's with the Jack U project I got with Diplo. And this song's a super special song. It's um it was the second song we made for the album actually. So, you know, and Diplo and I and Diplo and I haven't worked for a long time together, but you know, like over the last couple of years we had all this like material laying around and, <laughs> and then we got this vocal from Luna George and it came together so quickly, so it's a special one. You did that so quick and so effortlessly. Like, everybody's just chilling. He's just editing. Where's the weirdest place you found yourself editing to get something done real quick? I mean, I can't even, like, any anywhere you can imagine, pretty much, like, trains, airplanes, in line at Starbucks, just, like, <laughs> <laughs> on my beats and my Yeah, I'll my get a laptop. white chocolate mocha, yeah. um, iced, uh, and also, can I get a certified platinum song exactly. to go? Yeah, Thank I'm, you. I'm busy exactly. making a hit, excuse That's me. That's what's up right there, man. Uh, for those of you who don't know, no, no, uh, Luna George was just on that hit with DJ Snake, you know you like it. Yeah. Is it cool? I know you just were putting the final touches on it. Is it cool if we premiere it today? Let's do it. You down with Please. that? I'd okay, cool. So we'll get it on your stick. We'll get it to DJ Majestic. And then yep. we'll play it coming up next with Skrillex in the building. Tell us a little more about your project with uh, Jack U along with Diplo. You guys were just here in Brooklyn this weekend at Mad Decent Block Party. Over 15,000 people going nuts with you guys. Yeah. Was that Silento that also showed up? We had Silento come out. <laughs> we had, that was, I mean, I'm the biggest Silento fan. <laughs> and props for him. He's like 17 years old. And that Straight song up. is just huge. And it's such like a pure fun song that like anybody can get down to watch me and, whip yeah. watch me nay nay no, right we saw some of those snaps too you were whipping and nay nay out there of course <laughs> you can't not when Silento's no. in the building but you know that was a lot of fun you know Diplo's been doing the Mad Decent Block Party for years and this was like a really pinnacle one for him the Jack U project with all the people coming out we had we had CL and OG Mako and, and Vic Mensa and a lot of guests and, and Kai's as well who did our first single Take You There so it was just it was a really awesome show and a good time. How did Jack U come about? Like, how do you say, you know what, Diplo, let's do this? Well, like I said, like we've known each other for years, yeah. and we, you know, just as a hobby, we were making music together, and um, you know, like it was, it was weird in the blink of an eye, we just had an album sitting around. We're like, we should just put this out because we're just making so many songs, and um, <laughs> you know, it's like it's cool because it gives us an opportunity to experiment. I don't even think we would have made the records under just Skrillex or under Major Lazer or under Diplo or whatever. It was just like. We, there's no limits to Jack U and what that really is and what that could be. So as long as it's good music, good song, we'll work with anybody. And that's definitely one of the questions that comes up. Um, you're definitely considered one of the pioneers for the whole dubstep sound, if you will, that hard-hitting beat yeah. and the bass up in there. And, you know, m more recent, we're hearing a different sound from yeah. you. I mean, for instance, Where Are You Now with Justin Bieber and whatnot. Where is your sound going? You know, the thing is, like, Prior to like, you know, Scary Monsters and Ice Sprites era, my music sounded a lot different. And prior to that, I was singing in a band. So right. I, I just feel like I'm an artist and I'm going to continue to make music and grow and, and evolve. And it's it's all obviously me as a producer, too. I like to push sounds and what a drop is or what like a, an instrumental is or what even a pop song is like. That's what's fun for me is, you know, I never necessarily labeled myself anything. But people are always going to label you, and that's totally fine. But I'm just going to continue to evolve naturally. You know, it's always been what I've been about. So, Have you been in studio with the Beebs? Are you continuing to work with him in the studio with the Beebs? Yeah, I'm working on his album right now. Straight and, up. Um, yeah, and it's it's incredible. We're just making good songs. You know, and like, and under all the production and everything, Where You Now is a great song. You know, him and, this, him and his uh, writer he wrote together named Pooh Bear wrote yeah. the song. And Pooh Bear is, um, it's just basically, you know, the myself, you know, Justin Pooh Bear and, and uh, Michael Diamonds is another guy that I signed working on the record, you know, and um, yeah, it's been a very fun, intimate process and we're just making great songs. What surprised you the most of actually being in person and working with Justin Bieber, you know, from all the stuff, you know, all the stereotypes, everything you hear on the media, whatever it may Yo, be, what surprised you the most? It doesn't even matter what anybody says. He's the most talented, gifted kid I've ever seen, like at everything. He can skateboard. He can like beat everyone at ping pong and pool. He got like when I got the Iowa Hawk, I actually showed him the Iowa Hawk and he got right on it, was doing like one footed tricks and like he's just so talented and competitive and wants to be good at everything. He was also a really polite, sweet, sweet person as well, like bringing my friends in the studio and just other, 
you know, uh, artists that I that I bring on to the project to help collaborate on the record. He's just, you know, he's on fire right now, and I think he's re-inspired. And it was such it was such a great thing for him to trust us in this big risk with, you know, the sound of Where Are You Now? And I think it's, you know, the whole spirit is just like whimsical and just fun, and, and like anything goes right now as long as it's good music. So that's the vibe. During that experience that we had with Justin Bieber, is there a story that you think will stand out? that you'll be telling in the future to like your grandchildren and whatnot, like something that went down in studio that was hilarious or so weird or funky. You know what? That went down. On the down. real, yeah. I'm, I'm decent at skateboarding for not being like a skateboard. He almost beat me in a game of skate. <laughs> Straight up. It's he like, you know, it almost being the key word. <laughs> <laughs> almost. It's debatable, but he, um, you know, like you have horse when you play basketball, there's skate. So you land a trick. Or you can do a tricky oh. land where the other person doesn't land it, you get a letter, S K A T E. Right. So we were playing skate and he almost beat me. And I was really surprised that Justin Bieber almost beat me in a game of skate. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. He's good at everything. He freestyles. Like sometimes we'll just make a beat and then like he'll get in the booth and just start freestyling hilarious, like comedian. And we'll just be sitting there in stitches for like 10 minutes, not getting any work done. <laughs> Because he's just like telling jokes. Speaking about the sound and how you're evolving, Skrillex, with Where Are You Now, that went platinum with Justin Bieber and Diplo. A lot of people, sometimes when you go even more and more mainstream, some people start hating. Oh, yeah. sellout. You're going mainstream, yeah. whatever it may be. Oh, you're making money now. What's up with that? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that and sense. Dead Mouse, who has history with you yeah. from your beginning stages as a DJ and producer kind of started trolling you guys and in a way making fun of Where Are You Now yeah. by launching this song online. Let's hear it real quick. It's like a recorder. Is that what that is? I actually love this version. So he tweeted all that out. Dead yeah. Mouse did. Yeah. What is your response to that? How do you feel Yo, about listen, that? Listen, I always have love for Joel because he, you know, like he put me on at early times, but He's an asshole, and everyone knows that, and he knows that, and I think that's kind of his thing, you know? I mean, the one thing that is, is unfortunate about it is he has a record label, and when you have a record label, you got to be a leader, and he has people that are, like, signed to him, and I just feel like I couldn't imagine being a leader, you know, going out in, in, in the public image being such a negative attitude, you know? And so that's my one thing, and I, I couldn't, you know, I'm not going to judge him and tell him what to do, and, like, I don't take it personally because... I'm secure with myself and what I do. I love what I do, but I, I almost feel bad that that's his one way of getting attention rather than like going into the music and helping curate this thing. What he did, I think his attitudes changed over the last couple of years. So, but you know, like I said, I always have love for him and I don't take it personally. I almost feel worse for him because he's making, I feel like a lot of people are almost getting tired of his attitude, you know, calling people out on Twitter, but you know, maybe that's his thing and that's how he does his thing. Like I, you know, I personally, have become less connected to his music because of his personality is almost overshadowing that when yeah. he's such an incredible artist and you know has created this amazing world with his imagery and all his live show you know the only thing I would say is like, you don't need to be like that but if he wants to that's cool too yeah he's just showing uh, negativity on Twitter he should yeah. maybe join up with uh, Meek Mill yeah you know what I'm saying <laughs> do yeah. a collab on Twitter with Meek Mill that would be Dead huge. Mouse. I hope they get, make a, get a Grammy for that too. <laughs> show us all speaking of bro I want to know from you Skrillex who won Meek Mill or Drake who won that battle bro who did you guys think won? Who won that? Oh, dis Drake battle? killed it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Drake, Drake owned came the back, whole thing. and I think the thing is, you know, I'm not trying to take any sides right. or get along with the drama, but like, Drake was just so nonchalant about it, you know, and just kind of his demeanor it was definitely very sort of not trying, and and you know, I don't got, I don't get into the hip hop beef though. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, EDM's all peace and love. EDM, and, that's what surprises me about Dead Mouse. Yeah, you know, we've had David Guetta in here, DJ Snake, uh, we have Dylan Francis, and it's all about collaborating and supporting the, the the sound of EDM to continue to grow worldwide, yeah. which it has. And it surprised me that Dead Mouse would want to troll you guys and kind of throw that negativity and throw that shade at you, yeah. especially since you know, in a way, you guys have history, and he helped you out yeah. at the beginning to get on this platform. You know. Yeah, you know, like I said, it doesn't affect me or bother me, and you know, it's it's his own choice he's making in his own life. So, speaking of your attitude, my man, I know that when you were young, growing up in SoCal, a little bit of NorCal, you went through a lot of bullying, and we're coming up to back to school, and a lot of students, instead of being excited, yeah, they're scared, dude. They're freaked out about going back to school because right. that's where the bullies are at. Yeah. You know, 
What would be your advice to those students on how you survived the bullying that you went through? You know, I did like I found I found like punk rock back in in those days when I was growing up, because the whole idea was a group of people that wouldn't judge you for who you are. Yeah. So I think no matter what, society can be hard. No matter how old you are, no matter like where you come from, but as long as you stick together in a group of people that are like minded, doing positive things, all that stuff sort of goes away. It's when you're alone when it gets harder. But there's always someone like you, and you. That's when you have to take responsibility, big, be bigger person. And step outside of yourself and reach out to someone and mentor someone else and look up to someone and vice versa. So if you create that community, all the other stuff sort of kind of goes away and it's like it doesn't affect you. So I think that's that's the best advice I can get. It's like squad up with good people. And Skrillex haters right now are like, damn, I remember we used to bully that guy. <laughs> now he's performing in front of 100,000 people on stage <laughs> busting a nene <laughs> with Silento. <laughs> but that's just it. That's the attitude, and that's exactly what you're saying. You came out on the other side, and you get to give the biggest, like, hey, screw you to yeah. everybody. You know what? Like like I said, you know, um, I just, you know, I, I make music because I love music, and it all starts from there. And I surround myself with, with good people that I believe in as well. And I think it's important, too, to, like, you know, create your family and give everyone a responsibility to like create something together, no matter what it is, whether you're a chef or whether you break dance or whether you do poetry, whether you want to be a doctor, whatever it is, surround yourself with like minded people and even look up to the people that are better than you. You're going to rise to the occasion. So it's just those things. Preach on, bro. Be. Chilling with Skrillex right now, family, about to premiere a brand new song. He just finished editing it for us exclusively <laughs> for you at 92.3 Amp Radio, featuring Aluna George. And before we wrap up, I would love to ask you, man. So you started with the dubstep, moving to different sound. You got the undercut haircut, which is, you know, your entire side shaved. I just got shaved yesterday and it feels great. <laughs> Are you thinking about changing that in the future as well, you Skrillex? And what would that be? Time, I've had long hair since I was 16, but like time goes by so fast as yeah. you guys know it like I, it doesn't seem like I've had it for that long even though it's been like five or six years which sounds crazy but um you know like it's easier for me to think about what I'm going to progress in music than my fashion I'm pretty simple <laughs> and I've been the same for a long time but um you know you got the classic look just wear black all day every day yeah you don't well, have to people... make any decisions make less decisions you know uh, uh, focus oh, yeah, on the stuff easy. that matters right yeah, yeah. well you gotta love that everybody's going to get their hair cut and they're just asking for the Skrillex you know so you can't change it up anytime yeah. soon otherwise everybody's gonna get confused there you go. Thank you, bro. What do you want to say about your new single about to drop right now to you featuring Aluna George that you just finished editing a couple of minutes ago? Tell yeah, us I mean, why are you stoked I about love, this? I love this record. It's just like the lyrics are so, they hate you in that kind of like melancholy, sad, happy. You know, it's about leaving. You know, it's, it's hard to leave and it's harder being left. You know, that's mm. what it's about. Yes. So it's got that melody that dropped to me like this is so futuristic and doesn't sound like anything else. So... You know, talk Super about stoked. pushing sounds. I'm Super stoked. Uh, speaking of leaving and being left, is Skrillex single right now? Yes. Happily single. I'm happily single. I'm like focusing on music right now, you know? like Absolutely. There's a lot of exciting things happening and like, you know, yeah. Good stuff, man. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for this world premiere and for choosing 92.3 Amp Radio's listeners to get to hear this first. To you featuring Luna George right here, right now. We're Skrillex, familia! Woo! Yeah.